Hi, I'm Meg. And I'm Olenka. We are Cornell University students from the Mineral Nutrition course, and we're here to tell you about copper nutrition in people and plants. Copper is a transition metal and one of the elements in the periodic table. All life on Earth needs copper to survive, including us humans. We use copper as a cofactor in many proteins called cooper enzymes, where copper atoms help polypeptide chains of amino acids react with other metals in our bodies like iron. Copper and its proteins have important roles throughout our bodies, including brain function, immune function, and red blood cell production. Because copper is such an important nutrient, there are severe health effects if we are deficient in it. Children born without sufficient copper during their mother's pregnancies have issues with bone formation and with their cardiovascular systems. They also can have abnormalities with brain and immune system function for the rest of their lives. Adults with copper deficiency, meanwhile, have cardiovascular problems, including those concerning cholesterol, blood sugar, and regular heartbeats. And they can have neurological and behavioral problems as well. That doesn't mean we can't have too much copper, however. The metal is toxic at high levels because it can make reactive oxygen species from oxygen molecules that can tear apart cells, especially the mitochondria, the powerhouses of the cell. Luckily, most people's bodies do a good job of controlling the amount of copper in our cells, so this is not usually an issue. What our bodies can't control is how much copper we have access to. Like all essential nutrients, we have to eat regular supply of copper to stay alive. One of the main sources from which humans acquire nutrients is plants, who in turn take up nutrients from the soil. Plants, like all other living things, need copper, and it's important for the growth, development, and fertility of plants. It plays an important role in photosynthesis, reactive oxygen species detoxification, hormone perception, and cell wall formation. While humans are free to make changes in their diet, plants are restricted by the environment they grow in and the availability of nutrients in the soil. Almost 30% of farmland across the globe is made of neutral or basic pH soils that are considered to be copper deficient. Signs that a plant has copper deficiency include a slow growth rate, the yellowing of young leaves, an inability to form wood, a lack of flowers, and few seeds, meaning plants like wheat and rice might not produce enough grains for farmers. However, just like in humans, copper can also be toxic if it is accumulated in excess. Symptoms of toxicity are yellowing of mature leaves, slow root growth, and the production of reactive oxygen species. In order to keep the copper levels at the range that are best for them, plants tightly regulate all the processes that take up and redistribute copper. Uptake of copper into plants is done by copper transporter proteins. Some of these are in the CDR copped family and are important for taking up copper from the soil into the roots. Since free copper is not a safe form to keep in living cells, it has to be bound to molecules called ligands or chaperones. Once in the plant, copper needs to be taken from the root cells to the xylem, where it can be carried throughout the plant. Loading copper into the xylem cells requires a transporter protein from the HMA family. After moving through the xylem, copper is delivered to leaves, flowers, and fruit by the YSL and CTR copped transporters. All these proteins are regulated by different proteins called transcription factors that determine which other genes in the plant's DNA can be transcribed and translated into proteins. The main transcription factors that control copper levels are SPL7 and CITF1. They regulate all of the transporters we described to make sure enough copper is taken up. However, if the amounts of copper in soil are not high enough, another strategy can be activated. It is called copper economy mode and it redistributes copper from less needed areas and processes towards the most important ones, such as photosynthesis in the leaves. There is a lot that goes into controlling copper in plants, whether taking it up from soil or carrying it from one part of the plant to another. But we hope we have convinced you why it is important. Unless you're a big fan of eating liver, odds are most of your copper comes from plants like wheat or corn. And that copper is critical for so many parts of your own body. Healthy plants feed healthy people. We hope you have enjoyed this video.